Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. You know what that reminds me of? Why, it makes me just downright hungry for some good, thick yellow cream and fruit on a heaping bowl of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. That's what. Mmm, mmm, there's a special treat. Take a big spoonful. Those king-sized grains of wheat or rice, so crisp, so nut-like in flavor, taste more tempting, more scrumptious than ever when they're covered with smooth, rich cream. Try it tomorrow morning for a special treat with delicious, nutritious Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. It was soon after daylight when Ed Vickers, an old prospector, set out from his cabin near Fowlerville and made his way over the rugged ground near Panther Creek. He had covered nearly two miles before he paused and glanced slowly around to make sure of his bearings. Then he drew the short-handled axe from his belt, began chopping the limbs from a slender sapling. (coughs) Meanwhile, above him and partly hidden by the scrubby timber along the top of the ridge, Mike Dunn and Joe Stone were watching. This must be it, Mike. It looks that way, Joe. He's cutting stakes right now. Guess that's all we need to know. You want to do the job? Yeah. You're not so good a shot as I am. Don't miss. Get him on the first shot. Don't worry about that. He dropped. You got him. Now we'll get him out of sight and stake out that claim for ourselves. Come on, Joe. Then we'll get back to his cabin and find his ore samples. Yeah, yeah. Come on, hurry. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston and the great dog King entered the small trading post operated at Fowlerville by Perry Adams and his wife, Mary. It's Sergeant Preston and King. Hello, Perry. How are you? And Mary. Oh, good morning, Sergeant. Hello there, King, old boy. I got your letter about Ed Vickers and his strike, so King and I stopped by to record his claim. You're just in time for breakfast. Mary was just putting it on the table. King and I had our breakfast more than an hour ago, thanks. Oh, then you camped near here last night? About five miles away. Oh. Late last night when we made camp. Oh, but surely you'll have coffee with us, Sergeant. Thanks, Mary, but I think I'd better go see Ed Vickers right away. But King knows where he lives. Why not send him after Ed while you stay here for coffee with us? Well, of course. That's a good idea. King, old fellow, how about it? I want you to go to Ed Vickers' cabin, understand? He knows you. Bring him back here. Go on, boy. <laughs> I never saw anything like it. That dog understands everything you say, Sergeant. He certainly does. Just look at him heading for Vicar's cabin. When a man and a dog spend as much time together as we do, each learns to understand a lot of things. But sometimes King gets the better of me. <laughs> Sit down, Sergeant. I'll pour your coffee. Oh, thanks, Mary. <laughs> You and Perry might bring me up to date on this gold strike Vickers made. Well, it means as much to Mary and me as it does to Ed. You see, we grub stake him. Oh, I wondered why you wrote the letter instead of Ed. After shooting Ed Vickers, Joe and Mike traveled as fast as possible until they reached the vicinity of his cabin. Then they paused and studied the situation before proceeding. For several minutes, they watched from the concealment of a clump of trees. I don't see anyone around. Yeah, neither do I. 
But we can't afford to take any chances. Well, we're wasting time standing here. Let's shove on and get inside that cabin so we can look around. Now, take it easy, Joe. We gotta play this mighty careful. We gotta play our cards close to the chest. Remember, we got a hangman waiting for us if we make a misplay. But there's no one around and no one in the cabin. The old man lived alone. How do we know someone's not in this woods the same as we are? Maybe watching that cabin. Why would anyone else watch it? We can just walk up to the doors if we're making a friendly call on the old man. If anyone is around, he wouldn't see anything suspicious. No, all right, come on. The crooks moved boldly out of the sheltered trees and strode across the cleared area that surrounded Ed Vickers' cabin. At the door, they halted. Oh, I'll rap on the door. What's the use of rapping on the door? No one's home. It was your idea that someone might be watching. It was your idea to play this thing real safe. I'm willing to put on an act for anyone who might be watching. We'll make out like someone inside called to us to walk in. All right, all right. Don't talk so much. Yeah? Here we go. Better close the door so we won't be seen prowling around the inside of the cabin by anyone who passes. Yeah, now, let's see... Where'd he be most likely placed to hide the ore samples? Eh, your guess is as good as mine. Might be out of the floor, under his bunk, or... Maybe inside the mattress. Eh, we'll go through this place with a fine-tooth comb. Those samples have got to be here somewhere. Joe and Mike began a methodical search of the small cabin. They examined the floor for loose boards and the fireplace for stones that might be lifted out to reveal a hiding place. They looked over the rafters... Then in every cupboard and drawer, and in every tin box and jar that rested on the shelves. They fell to the mattress and the pillow on the bed, and Mike reached into a barrel of flour and felt around for pieces of gold-bearing rock. It seemed as though their search must be a futile one when Joe Stone noticed that one floorboard fitted more loosely than the others. I'm wondering about this floor. Joe, we examined the floor. That board's nailed down like all the others. Yeah, but look at the hammer dents around the nails. Looks to me like it's been nailed down lots more frequent than the others. Give me that hunk of iron. If you're right, the old glue went to an awful lot of trouble to hide a few chunks of rock. Not near as much trouble as we're going to to find them. Uh, here's the iron. Now we'll see if my hunch is right. Uh, came up easy. Now, now we'll have a look. Hey, Joe, I found them. The rocks? Yeah. Here, let's take a look. Look at the veins in these rocks. He really made a strike. <laughs> Mike, it looks like we're going to have a real banana. It sure does. Here, let me help you, Joe. We'll put the rocks in this sack. Now hold it open. There. There you are. Put that floorboard back in place. Yeah. Now let's go back to town and get our gear. Then we'll head for Dawson. Get this stuff for Sade and follow our claim. <laughs> From now on, Joe, you and me will be in clover. Hey, what's that? A dog at the door. Someone must be coming. Now act like we're waiting for Vickers, understand? Sure, I know. I'll open the door. I'll put this sack out of sight. Hey, who invited you in here, Pooch? Never mind the dog. Look out and see who's coming. Well, I don't see anyone, Mike. Not a soul in sight. <laughs> Figure it out. Well, this can't be Vickers' dog. I never saw one with him. No, he never had a dog. This must be a stray. And he don't act like it. Look at him sniffing around. He acts like he's been here before. Hey, Pooch, what do you want? Oh, tough, huh? Well, get out of here. Careful, Joe. That dog doesn't seem to like you. Get back. Get away. Do you hear me? Let him alone, Joe. I ought to put a bullet in him. Maybe I will. Put that gun away, you jughead. Suppose his owner's near here. He'd hear the shot and investigate. Now put it away. All right, all right. Anyway, there goes the dog. That blasted ornery critter. Yeah, he's a mighty fine-looking dog to be running around loose. But he's wearing a collar. Must belong to somebody. Yeah, I guess so. Well, come on, Mike. Let's clear out of here. All right. I'll get the sack. Yeah, I'm all set. Close the door, just like we found it. Yeah. Hold on a minute, Joe. What's wrong? Look, there's that dog. Well, what about him? He has his nose to the ground like he's trailing someone. Yeah. Maybe that's why he came to the cabin. He's lost and looking for his owner. Maybe just trying to find his owner's trail. Well, let's move on, Joe. The great dog king had been told by Sergeant Preston to find Ed Vickers. As he followed the trail, he caught the scent of the two men he had encountered in Ed's cabin. 
More than a mile from the cabin, the trail of Ed Vickers ended at a small pool of blood. Here, too, was the scent of the men he had seen in the cabin. But as far as King could learn, the trail of Ed Vickers ended. But Ed Vickers was not there. For a moment, King stood still, then caught a faint scent and raced ahead. Meanwhile, in Fowlerville, Sergeant Preston drank his coffee and accepted another cup as he listened to Perry Adams and his wife relate their good fortune. Thanks, Mary. I can remember the day old Ed Vickers came in here and asked me to grub stake him. Oh, <laughs> now, don't rub it in, Perry. I know I objected. Sergeant, I never saw Mary so mad. Oh. <laughs> she said old Ed was loco, and everyone in the Yukon knew it. Everyone, she said, but me. He's peculiar, but he's not crazy. <laughs> I've known the old fellow since he came to the Yukon. He had a streak of bad luck, invested his money in some mines that didn't pay off, which made him bitter, I suppose. Oh, but that wasn't why I objected to staking him, Sergeant. We just didn't have any money ourselves. Grub staking prospectors is a risky business, Mary. I don't blame you. Perry gave me supplies and equipment that cost three or four hundred dollars. I thought that was the last we'd hear of him. Mm. But you should have seen Mary hug the old critter last week when he walked in here and showed us samples of ore he dug out of the ground. <laughs> I admit it. <laughs> I guess I should be ashamed of myself, but I was so relieved. May I see one of his samples, Barry? Oh, he didn't leave them with us. He's a, a queer old fellow. He said he'd keep them until you got here to make out his claim papers. I guess he didn't trust even Perry and me. He wouldn't even tell us where he made his strike. That's like him. But there's one thing you can be sure of. What's that, sir? Ed Vickers will never cheat you. You grub-staked him, and that means that you and Mary own half of his claim. You can trust Ted to give you your share. Oh, we don't mistrust him. Not now. Oh, that must be King at the door. Oh, I'll let him and Ed in. Took them a long time to get here. King's been gone for over an hour. Yeah, that's right, Hello. Sergeant. I didn't realize it was that long. Come on. King, where's Mr. Vickers? What, isn't Ed with him? Well, no. King has something in his mouth. It, it looks like a muskrat. What? What's that you've got there, old fella? We didn't send you hunting muskrats. Here, King, let me see that. Oh, wait, it's not an animal. It's a fur cap. Why, that's the old fur cap Ed Vickers wears. I'd know it anywhere. Are you sure? Yes, it is. I recognize it, too. And look here. What? Blood. And a bullet hole here and here. <laughs> well, what's it mean, Sergeant? It means Ed Vickers has been shot. Oh, this is terrible. King must have found him and brought his cap so you'd understand. There's no doubt of that. Perry... We'll go to Vickers. King will lead us to him. I'll get my coat and hat. It won't take but a second. I'm going too. No, you stay here. Perry and I'll travel faster without you. Oh, I guess that's true, Sergeant. I'm ready, Sergeant. Mary. Yes? Say nothing about this to anyone until we get back. Well, I won't, but I don't see why. If Ed's been killed, his killer will try to hide the fact. He may show his hand if he thinks he's safe. The Sergeant's right, Mary. Oh, yes, I see. I won't say anything about it. Lead on, King. Take us to Ed Vickers. <laughs> we'll continue our story... In just a moment. Now wait. Stand back. This is it. The famous ready-to-serve cereal shot from guns. Yes, fellas and girls, I wish you could see it yourself. In the big Quaker mills, huge guns are loaded with only the premium wheat or rice grains. Then, those choice kingpin kernels are exploded up to eight times normal size. Yes, actually shot from guns to make them crisp and tender, bigger and better tasting. Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice are puffed to perfection. Shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. You get such crisp, tender, puffed kernels, they fairly melt in your mouth. The wonderful part of it is, the more you eat, the more He-Man nourishment you get. Because Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice have added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So don't wait. Enjoy both delicious kinds. Quaker popped wheat... And Quaker puff rice. Remember, the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. It comes only in the big Quaker red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front.
And now to continue our story. When Mike Dunn and Joe Stone returned to Fowlerville, Mike went to their boarding house to pick up their gear, while Joe stopped at a cobbler's to have his boot mended. Mike was tying up their blanket rolls when Joe joined him. Uh, hello, Joe. I got everything ready to start for Dawson. You can break out the rolls again. There's no need for us to go to Dawson. Why not? We have to file claim papers and get this gold assayed. I was talking to the cobbler while he fixed the tear in my boot. He says a Mountie sergeant's in town. A Mountie? Yeah, a sergeant named Preston. Hey, I've heard plenty about him. Well, what's he got to do with us staying here? He can save us a trip to Dawson. Mounties can make out claim papers, and he'll take our ore samples and have them assayed for us. Yeah, that'd save us a lot of trouble. It's more than 100 miles to Dawson. And it'll give us a chance to get back up to Panther Creek so we can bury the old man before someone stumbles onto his body. Now, there's not much chance of anyone finding him. But we'll be a lot safer if we put him under the ground. Yeah, and we can start working the claim before freezing weather sets in. We may get out enough by hand to pay for machinery to work it during the winter. Uh, where will we find him, Mountie? The cobbler said he saw him and his dog go into the trading post. He said Preston usually puts up there when he comes to town. And let's go down there and have him make out the claim papers. Just help me get our gear unpacked first. Sure, I'll help you. When Sergeant Preston and Perry Adams followed King from the trading post, they expected him to head toward Ed Vickers' cabin. But instead, the big dog turned south and westward from town. Sergeant, he isn't going toward Ed's cabin. King knows what he's doing. We'll follow him. But if Ed's been shot and killed somewhere away from his cabin, I can't understand how King would know about it. If you'll remember, Perry, I told him to find Ed Vickers. Yes, I know. If King didn't find him at his cabin, he'd trail him. Oh, I see, Sergeant. A short time later, King led Sergeant Preston and Perry Adams through the rocky and twisting ravine called Panther Creek. Under a ledge concealed by loose brush, the two men found Ed Vickers. Must be under the ledge here. Whoever shot him tried to cover him up with brush. Let's pull the brush away. All right. There he is. We'll get him out where we can examine him. Yep. Let him down easily, Perry. All right. That's it. Sergeant, he's been shot in the head. Yes, but he's still breathing. Breathing? Good. Look at this wound. Oh, seems to be a long one. Now I see what happened. The bullet didn't penetrate the skull. It just grazed it under the scalp. That's why there were two bullet holes in the cap. The bullet went in at one place, glanced along the skull, and passed out of the cap again. That's right. Whoever shot him saw the blood and didn't remove his cap to see how serious the wound was. But when King found him, he wanted to bring something to you to show he'd located him. Yes, and the cap was the only part of Ed's clothing he could remove without tearing. Well, we've got to get a doctor. Is the one in Fowlerville? Oh, yeah. Doc Blackburn's the town's doctor. And I'll write a note and have King take it to Mary. I'll tell her to get Doc Blackburn and bring him here as fast as possible. Well, they won't know how to find this place. King will lead them back here. Oh, yes, of course. I should have known that. Well, I write the note, you make Vickers as comfortable as possible with him. Sure thing. I'll fix him up all right. A short time later in Fowlerville, Mike Dunn and Joe Stone entered the trading post to be greeted by Mary Adams. Oh, good morning. What can I do for you? Uh, we heard a Mountie was here. We want to see him. Oh, you mean Sergeant Preston? Yeah, that's him. He was here a while ago. I can't say exactly when he'll return. And he hasn't left town yet? No, he hasn't. Oh, where is he? We'll go find him. Well, he and my husband went on an errand. Uh, somewhere just outside of town. They'll come back here, I'm sure. Oh, I see. Well, then we'll just have to come back later. Will you tell him we'll be back? We want to be sure to see him before he leaves town. Yes, I'll tell him. Well, your dog's trying to get in, lady. Oh, will you let him in as you leave? For sure. Come on, Joe. Hey, get away. Oh, get away. Get. That's the same dog you jumped us before, hey. Mike. Hey, no, keep down for hey, lady. How are you going to shoot that dog one of these days? He should be shot now. King, the very idea. What's the matter with you? These men did nothing to you. Of course we didn't. He jumped us once before today. He did? Yeah. You better chain him up, lady. He's dangerous. I can't understand it. He never did anything like that before. Well, there's always a first time. Now, come on, Joe. Let's shove off. Uh, tell the Monty we'll be in to see him. Yes, I will. I think he'll be back in an hour or so. Joe, you're a fool. What do you mean? Didn't you hear what she called that dog? Sure, she called him King. What about it? That's not her dog. It's Preston's. 
He's the smartest dog in the whole Yukon. Well, what if he is? I don't like it. Oh, you don't get what I'm driving at. Listen, that dog was trailing someone when he left Vickers' cabin this morning. Yeah, what about it? It looks to me like he was trailing Vickers. Say, maybe you're right. I never thought of that. If he found him, he'd come back to get Preston. If that's so, we're in trouble. No, no, not yet we're not. Preston's not expected back for a spell. That'll give us time to get back to Panther Creek and move Vickers' body to where it won't be found. Where'll we move it? We'll take it down to the rapids. Dump him in, and that'll be the last anybody will ever see him. That'll leave us in the clear. We'd better get there as quick as we can. If that dog king is as smart as he's supposed to be, he'll take Preston to Panther Creek. When Mike and Joe were out of the trading post, King began to whine and rolled over on his back. King, what's the matter? You're acting so strangely today. Oh, now I see. The note under your collar. Oh, there. Now, let's see what it says. A few minutes later, Mary turned the key in the lock of the trading post's front door and with King beside her, hurried to Doc Blackburn's office. When she explained what Sergeant Preston and Perry had found, Dr. Blackburn gathered up his instruments and medical kit, and they were soon following King over the trailless ground toward Panther Creek. It's a good thing we've got King to lead us, Mary. I've never been back in here. Neither have I, and there are no trails to follow. I've heard about King, who's supposed to be mighty smart. He is, but he did something strange today. Strange? Yes. He attacked two men who were in the trading post. And for no reason at all. If I hadn't been there to call him off, he'd have hurt them seriously. Well, that is odd. Yeah, look at him now. What? He's running off and leaving us. But King! King, come back. He'll wait for us. He's not paying any attention but to you. Doc, he's out of sight. Perhaps we're near Panther Creek and he knows it. Oh, I hope so. I can't believe King would desert us in this wilderness. We'll soon know whether he has or not. Mary Adams and Dr. Blackburn didn't realize that King had caught a familiar scent in the midday air, a scent that infuriated him and made him charge toward its source. Meanwhile, Mike Dunn and Joe Stone reached the bluff overlooking Panther Creek. That's not far from here now, Joe. I'm out of breath from this cross-country traveling. At least we save some time coming this way. Now keep your eyes open for a place where we get down into the creek valley. Yeah, I will. Hey, Joe, look. Huh? Look down below us. It's the Mountie and the trading post owner. They found Vickers' body. How could they find it? I don't know, but they found it all right. Mike, we better clear out of here. If they see hey, us... now, hold on. I'm not clearing out, and neither are you. But, Mike... Listen, that mine's worth a million, and I'm not leaving it. Run, sling your rifle. Yeah, what are you going to do? I'll pick off the Mountie. You get Perry Adams. Shoot him? Right. King had followed the scent of the crooks far in advance of Mary and the doctor and had drawn close to the two men as they prepared to shoot. The great dog knew instinctively that he had to break up the gunplay and gathered himself for the attack. Now get down on your knees and steady yourself like this. All right. Now take aim. Now let me fire first. Go ahead. Hey! It's a dog! Get away! Get off me! As Mike Dunn pressed on the trigger of his rifle, King sprang forward, knocking him off balance as the gun cracked. In the valley below, the bullet whined dangerously close to Sergeant Preston. Hurry, look out. What? Who fired that shot? On the bluff. Look, King's up there with two men. They're fighting. Quick, draw your gun and follow me. Sergeant Preston and Perry Adams hurried to reach the top of the steep, jagged bluff, where the great dog King was keeping Mike and Joe too busy to draw a bead on his master or Perry. King leaped at the men, keeping them continually off balance, unable to do any more to protect themselves from the big dog's rushes. Get away! Get off! I'll shoot him! No, no, don't shoot! You'll hit me! Beat him off with the butt of your gun! Right, get, get back, you brute! Get! Knock him off the edge! Hit him! Get back! There he goes. He went over the edge of the bluff. That'll take care of him. We knocked him galley west. Hit the ground, Joe. Quick! What? What's the matter? Preston and Perry Adams are climbing up the bluff. I forgot all about them. No, I got them where I want them. <laughs> this will be like picking ducks off a pond. Now watch, Joe. Preston! Stop where you are! We're coming up to that ledge! Don't try it! You're covered! Wait! Hold your fire! There's no use talking, Adams. You two are perfect targets. You get the same medicine we gave Ed Vickers. You'll hang for murder if you shoot. We'll let him have it, Joe. After we get these two out of the way, that gold will be ours. Yeah. 
I'll shoot Adams and I'll take care of Preston. Drop those guns. Hey, what? Get your hands up. Why, you... I'll shoot to kill. Drop the guns. It's a dark. He's got the drop on us. Now get your hands up. All right, all right. Hey, how did you get up here? You were so busy watching the valley below that you didn't pay any attention to what was going on behind you. Good work, Doc. They had Perry and me in a tight spot for a few moments. When Mary and I heard that shot, we thought we might be too late to do anything. We didn't know King had the situation in hand. Doc, there's a job for you down there in the valley. Ed Vickers needs you. He's unconscious. I'll get right down. A short time later, Doc Blackburn turned to look into the anxious faces about him. How's Mr. Vickers, Doc? Yes, yes. Doctor, how he is he? He has a slight fracture of the skull, Mary, but he'll pull through. Oh, sure, that's glad wonderful. of that. We can thank King that he's alive. If he hadn't found him when he did, Vickers wouldn't have lasted but a few hours. <laughs> oh, look. King's holding his paw up to you, Doc. Easy, King. Easy, <laughs> Now, Now, what's the matter, old boy? Well, Doctor, when those crooks kicked him over the bluff, he sprained his foreleg. Well, <laughs> I'll fix you up, King, old boy. While I'm doing it, I'd like someone to tell me who those two murdering varmints are. Their names are Mike Dunn and Joe Stone. I just got a full confession from them. When I came up behind them, I heard them say they had shot Vickers. That's right. And they planned to kill Perry and me, as you know. But why did they do it? To jump Vickers' claim. Thanks to King, their plans were upset. He found Vickers and led us to him. Those two are handcuffed, and they'll go back to town with us to face charges. <coughs> yes, King, old fellow. With your help, this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. If you fellows or girls were to join Sergeant Preston and King tomorrow morning, you'd probably be in for a hard chase and long hours of dog sledding. And for the stamina it takes, you'd want a good nourishing He-Man breakfast. A breakfast that includes a delicious heaping bowlful of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. Remember, in these famous cereals shot from guns, you get extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Ask for Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice in the big red and blue Quaker packages. Never sold in bags or bulk. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King Meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case, 48 hours to pay. When John Amory was held up on the trail, there was no time for me to trail the robber. Instead, I had to do some fast detective work. My efforts to solve the case led me straight into a death trap at a moment when King wasn't around to help me. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. Your best bet for hot breakfast is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, if you want to be a star in sports and school activities, make your hot cereal Quaker Oats. Because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. You get more growth more endurance from oatmeal than from any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker...